so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a meatloaf. And how I'm going to make the meatloaf is I'm going to use some vegetables that I have in my fridge that if I don't use up, um, they're going to go bad. And I have some hamburger that you buy in this massive tube right here. And as you can see, it's a rather large tube. And I think the price of it was $32. And I'm going to take some of the hamburger and I'm going to put it in the mixer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hamburger and I'm going to slice. And I'm going to put some into the mixer because I'm going to use the mixer to actually mix everything up because I have bad wrists. And if you have bad wrists, you don't really want to be uh, mixing it up like that. So I'm going to take a chunk, put it in the mixer, and then I'll skip to the next step and show you what I'm doing. So what we're going to do is I have a few vegetables that are in the fridge. I have some uh, peppers of different colors, and I have a half an onion, and I have these green onions that are kind of getting wealthy, and I have some celery. So what I'm going to do, since I uh, have so much hamburgers, I'm going to make some meatloaf. And I'm going to use these ingredients as well as some spice. So we're just going to start cutting up the onions. And you're going to want to be careful of that because they are, this knife is really sharp. And depending on what kind of knife you're using, you would want to get cut. And then we're just going to, once we get all the vegetables cut up, we're going to put it inside the um, KitchenAid mixer. And we're going to use that to actually cut up our and mix the vegetables so i'm just going to place them in when i get them all cut up and depending on how much vegetables you like you can put the desired amount in i just really like these vegetables it gives it a great summertime flavor because it is things that you can grow on your own that you don't have to buy at the uh, um, grocery store now if you uh, can grow them, great. If you can't, buy them off of local farmers. There's all kinds of people that uh, sell whatever they grow. And it does support the local economy as well. So I'm just going to uh, fast forward to where I have all the vegetables cut up and show you what it looks like. So as you can see, we have some celery cut up some red onions, some green onions, some green pepper, red pepper, uh, orange and yellow, and we also have some green on the other end, which is just right there, I'll show you right there. So we're gonna take that, and there's the mixer that we're gonna put the uh, ingredients in. So I'm just going to use the dough hook to actually mix this up. So I'm gonna attach the dough hook right now, I'm just gonna grab it over the sink. I had it for baking my uh, flour that, or my bread that I have to take out of the oven in a sec. Just take a second here. It's hard to stick on when you have stuff in the bowl. There we go. So now I'm just going to add in my vegetables. And then I'm going to add in the crackers and the egg as well as the spices. And I'm going to skip to the next step where I have the uh, spices all ready to go. And she'll show you exactly what I put in it. I'm just going to take my bread out of the oven now. So I'm going to skip to that. And so now that we're at this part, we can add the egg in. I'm going to add the egg in and as well as the cracker crumbs. And then some spices. And then we're going to move to the mixing. So there's the egg getting added into. And I have some cracker crumbs already uh, done up. So I'm just going to put those in. And you don't actually need that many. Just uh, enough to add a little bit. So now we're going to sprinkle in some black pepper. Now I would say you probably only need probably a teaspoon or so depending on how much you like. I'm putting in black pepper. I'm putting in onion powder. As well, that's going to be a teaspoon. I only put in 
one fourth of uh, black pepper. A lot of people don't like black pepper as much as I do, which is unfortunate. I put some parsley in there. And I'm just going to sprinkle that in. And I'm going to put in a couple of red peppers just because I like that little extra kick it gives it. And a little bit of garlic powder. And then I'm going to turn the mixer on and mix it all up. And the thing I like about this mixer is it locks into place like that and I can mix things up. And this way I don't have to actually mix it, get sore hands or any of that. I just use my dough hook and I let it go for a few minutes and it seems to do rather fine. I definitely would recommend getting a mixer if anybody doesn't have one or they're considering getting one. It was definitely worth the money. So I'm just going to shut that off for a minute. And I'm going to get the stuff that's on the sides. And you want to make sure that you never try to uh, get the stuff on the sides while it's on. Because it will hurt you. It's a machine. Machines don't know to stop. Unless you tell them. So... And we could even speed it up if we wanted to go a little quicker. And you should never run your mixer more than two minutes at a time. I don't. But I want mine to last for a very long time. And I'm going to scrape the sides again. So I'm just going to get my pan and put it in my pan now. Now that it's been mixed and I'll show you what it's going to look like once we do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the hamburger mixing and I'm going to put it in the roaster pan and I'm going to shape it out to be able to cook it in the roaster. Now the reason I'm cooking it in my roaster and not a meatloaf pan is because I'm making bread and I overlooked the fact that I needed another bread pan. My bad. So now that I have it all flattened out, I'm going to put the cover on and bake it in the oven. And now I will show you what it looks like on its progress. And I'm baking it at 375 for the next half hour. So after the meatloaf has been in the oven for an hour, I took it out, and as you can see, it has shrunk quite a bit, and there is some grease. So what I'm going to do while I'm preparing the mashed potatoes for the top is I'm actually going to brown the meatloaf. So how you're going to do that is you're going to grab your oven mitt, and you're going to drain off all that excess grease because you don't want to uh, serve that because that's pretty gross. And I have my measuring cup underneath, so because you don't want to pour it down the drain, you want to have it actually disposed of in the proper way. It's definitely not good to put it in the drain. And the good thing about putting it in the measuring cup, I can actually tell you the liquid amount of it. There's actually quite a bit. And then I'm going to put it in the oven, brown the top, and make the mashed potatoes that are going to go on top of it with the cheese. So we drained out all the grease, and it was exactly just a little under 400 milliliters of grease. That's an incredible amount of grease. I'm just going to show you, as you can see. 
So I'm just going to make the mashed potatoes and I'm just going to skip to the next step. So now that the meatloaf's been browned, what we're going to do is we're going to take our mashed potatoes that I have right here. And if you want to see how I make mashed potatoes, I'll put a link to my mashed potatoes video at the bottom. If you can check it out. And we're just going to cover the meatloaf with mashed potatoes. You want to make sure they're hot, that way when you cover it with cheese, they melt rather nicely. So now that it's covered, I have some cheese here that I uh, have, uh, that I melted, or I'm sorry, that I shredded, and now it's going to melt on there. So this is how you make this meatloaf. I hope you enjoyed, and if uh, you like and you want to watch some more of my videos, click the subscribe button, and thanks for watching. So this is what it looks like once you cut it. You can see the cheese and the potatoes, and I added peas because I like peas. So thanks for watching.